pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Vietnam Veterans News Podcast. News of interest about Vietnam veterans from a Vietnam veteran. Now, here's your host, Mac Payne. This is Mac Payne here with episode 1772 of the Vietnam Veteran News Podcast. News about the Vietnam War and the brave veterans who served there, as told to you by yours truly, a Vietnam veteran. This podcast episode will feature another unplugged conversation with myself and my fellow Vietnam veteran, Mr. John Shoemaker, as we sat on the pickup tailgates under the shade of the pecan trees out in the backyard, just chatting about times in Vietnam. Hope you enjoy it. This is Mac and John having a little unplugged conversation about that tremendous podcast episode where he talked about the aftermath of the death of his soldier, Larry Gatliff. Kind of grabs you in the gut. And John, uh, that was really something. I don't even know how you got through telling that story because it was so compelling. But tell us a little bit more about those experiences you had with the Ratliff family. Some afterthoughts here to that story since I've really not related narrated it in this way for many, many years. But first, I remember distinctly at the time when I was there with Larry in the basket as we were loading him and and taking him up to the waiting helicopter above us, right on Ho Chi Minh Trail. My my first thoughts were, my God, I hope this helicopter isn't shot out of the sky because it's not far up and, and it's very vulnerable. And at the same time, I also was kicking myself because I thought, I had tried to do everything possible to anticipate an ambush and to position my platoon correctly and to follow my instincts. And certainly I felt like, boy, if there was going to be an ambush in my time in Vietnam, this was going to be the place. And yet I really put maybe a little too much confidence in that scout dog to sniff him out first, but they knew we were there. And that helped shape my thinking about actions well, after this, once you have contact, they now know where you are. So anyways, I really felt responsible for still, even though I did everything I knew enough to do, and I've second-guessed myself all these years saying, what else could I have done, should I have done, what would I have done if I had known better? But sometimes you can't avoid it. In any event, the aftermath of this many years later, especially when I try to contact the family, the realization sits in on several levels. First is the incredible impact it has on families of fallen soldiers and even those who are wounded, but especially fallen soldiers because they've lost them forever. And that creates so much conflict, so much pain and agony in families that few can survive. Many don't make it. I don't have statistics, but I have spoken to a number of families, and that pain is something that just does not go away. And then all of the recriminations, oh, we shouldn't have let him do it, you know, it wasn't worth it, uh, oh, you wanted him to do it, and I didn't, and then back and forth, and it, it just is a no-win situation. Then the second level that really bothers me, honestly, is the the ugly, I mean, painful awful people who would attack families of soldiers is just beyond my comprehension. It is something that just reaches into my core being as a human. It's repulsive. It's revulsion beyond words. I I just get so angry thinking about it. At these funeral services for soldiers, you'd have these so-called religious groups and other crazy groups that would show up and insult the family, insult the soldier, insult everybody there. I mean, in the worst vitriol you can imagine. You now, that kind of attitude, I thought, people cannot be like that. I mean, it's just, it's, it's beyond comprehension. Yet today, I look at what's happening in, in America with all of this vitriol, conflict, acrimony, chaos, mayhem, 
it's amazing how some people waste their lives, literally waste their lives for nothing. And they just don't get it. But the sacrifices of our soldiers is something that really does provide the evidence for how freedom is so expensive and how unique this country is. And yes, over the millennia, soldiers died for their countries, most of the time, not by their choice, but for sure, they think that they're trying to survive, they're trying to do the right thing. But America has always had struggle. It is not easy. Families have to sacrifice. And I think that at least for me, you know, Veterans Day, Memorial Day, Purple Heart Day, I mean, it's, there are a number of days where it is important never to forget. And that will not happen for me. It stays with you. It's burned into my memory. Here it is 50 years after the fact. And I told 80 to 90% of this story about Larry Gatliff and his mother and family from memory that's seared into my brain. Anyways, I just wanted to give you that perspective on these kinds of events that occur, and I'm sure it's not much different for so many other soldiers. John, all I can say is you are a great American and a tremendous representative of that Vietnam veteran generation, one which I always say is as great as any that ever heeded the call of duty. But you've said a very important thing and true. Life is not easy. America is not a country that was formed by some dictator or something. It was formed on an idea, and that is liberty, an idea. The late Charles Krauthammer hit the nail on the head when he put it this way. The United States of America is the greatest and most miraculous endeavor mankind has ever undertaken in its long quest to get politics right. America is founded on an idea. The idea is liberty. This is probably the rarest phenomenon in the political history of the world. And the only thing that holds it together are people like you and me and others who love the country and its liberty and want to maintain it. It's a hard thing to do. We have to be on guard all the time. And as you say, we speak harshly of these protesters and everything, but I think what it is, they are people that just don't realize the greatness of the country and what we have here and how we need to maintain it. We just have to hope and pray that uh, everybody will wise up a little bit. But we just have to we never give up. Just keep talking like you're doing. Well, I try to write about it now. Since I've written some of these stories, I try and present some of my uh, perspectives because for sure with all of the conflict going on about socialism, about the First and Second Amendments and all of this sort of thing, I, I mean, there is no doubt in my mind, and it will not change, that this country is a unique experiment that changed the course of human history in all human history where freedom became a priority where a constitution was developed where the bill of rights is formalized where people can pursue happiness and wealth and innovate on a level that's never been experienced in and again all of human history and lastly the pursuit of happiness is something that comes at great cost and that's the price that has to be paid, unfortunately. But make no mistake, the model established by the founding fathers is truly the jewel of humanity. I say that I know it sounds hokey. I say that as the most heartfelt uh, belief that I can give. I agree with you 100%, and that's why we have to Always be willing to step forward and say what needs to be said. Even in these days of political correctness, it needs to be said. I appreciate you saying it. I'm going to do the best I can to spread your words as far as I can because they're so important and they need to be heard by everyone. Well, thank you, Mac Payne. Your service is well needed. I appreciate that greatly, and I hope to, we can keep on doing this in the future and we can hear some more of your exciting stories. And I have to ask this question. It's burning inside me. I need to ask it. Maybe it's a little inappropriate for this occasion, but when you were telling the story about the aftermath of Larry Ratliff, 
You said that when you were out there and the soldiers who tried to outflank you, and you, fortunately you had a squad out there that cut them down, and you put grenades under their bodies. Was that something like a company policy or just something you came up with on a moment's notice? Because it was, as Samuel L. Jackson would say, that was too cool for school. I was just wondering, <laughs> was that something you just came up with on a spur well, of the moment? Or? <laughs> yeah, no. We had it as a standard practice would be to set up Claymore mines with tripwires on trails for ambushes. On the other hand, on that day, it was the first time I did do it once or twice more in that same location because booby traps was the standard weapon used by the enemy, especially the Viet Cong. It was always trying to maim and kill Americans with booby traps. It was not the honorable mano a mano fight. To me, it was the cowardice booby traps. Well, once this happened, people were pretty upset. Uh, soldiers in my unit were pretty upset about the whole situation. So I told them to go ahead and put the, the grenades underneath and pull the pins so that when the body was moved, the pins would release automatically and hopefully take out the soldiers in the area. There was another time when we ran into a, an MVA soldier and there was a shootout. He lost, and we we also put a grenade under his body uh, in that same area of the cornfield. You know, all of these battles around the cornfield. This went on for days and weeks. That was a practice given. Uh, we didn't move any of the MVA bodies except down the hill. We had to roll them down the hill a bit, but uh, we left them where they fell. In that type battle, there's no rules. That's another commentary about communism. They believe in the ends justify the means, so they have no honor. They'll do anything saying that it will benefit the common good, and that includes the way they do booby traps and everything, and that's another detestable thing about communism. Anyway, so that was very interesting. I, I bet that was sweet later on that night, and you heard the grenades go off. <laughs> yeah, There's no question about it. When the explosions went off, we knew exactly what happened. And it's true. If you don't kill them, they will kill you. So who's going to do it first? I, I don't want anybody to get the wrong impression that I'm laughing about people dying because I always felt, too, all those people on the other side that died in Vietnam, they had parents and brothers and sisters. And it was the same way. It was just bad for everybody. They were trying to kill you, so if you want to stay alive, you've got to do what you have to do. And in another episode in the future, I will, I will speak to that very fact, where I ended up having a big influence on the family of an MBA soldier. We want to hear that. Those pictures you sent of the ones who died at another battle over at Cam Duck, I mean, that was heartbreaking looking at those pictures because you knew each one of those people was the apple of some mother's eye. And they died. It's terrible. We're all humans on this planet, and we're driven by people who make bad decisions. So in the case of Larry Gatliff, speaking to his family was one experience, but then also at one point being able to influence the family of another soldier who would have killed us had we not killed him first. Well, I can't wait to hear that one. And again, I want to compliment you on doing this because... I told you about those uh, four people that died in my flight platoon, and I wrote a letter to their parents, and it was so compelling. I wouldn't have the nerve to talk to them in person because it was too much. Uh, they were just so broken up about the death of their son. So I thought that was pretty good. I, better than pretty good. I think what you did for his mother, Edith, and sister was just tremendous. It's a wonderful thing. So I, I thank you for doing it. Thank you. I will probably would not have done that, so I'm so in awe about what you did there, and I'm glad you did it. It was great. I loved it. That is the end of my unplugged conversation with fellow Vietnam veteran Mr. John Shoemaker as we sat on the tailgates of the pickup trucks in the shade of the pecan trees out in the backyard. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for listening to these stories. You are cordially invited to return again soon and often to listen to more that will be coming your way on this podcast, the Vietnam Veteran News.
How about that? Ain't that a mess?